Welcome to another edition of Plank of the Week. I've got the plank here, uh, and of course we award it at the end of the show to the person who has been the biggest plank of this particular week. And I have to say, uh, this week there are even more people to look at than there have been for a while. I'm delighted to say, once again, Dawn Neeson is with me. Uh, Kevin O'Sullivan, of course, as well. This is turning into a bit of a regular thing. I mean, people are quite enjoying the fact that it's the same people all the time. Apart from all the people who used to do it with me, of course, who are all complaining that they want to be back on. Well, you've on. got the dream team. I have. Why would you go anywhere yeah, else? Why would you why go, would you go anywhere best? else? Now, why I can't remember who started best? off last week. I think it was Kevin. So I think, Dawn, you should kick us off this well, week. Well, you never start, though, do you? No, I never do. Do you what? want me to start? Do you think you should? No, I think it should be you. Okay. Ladies okay. first. <laughs> you should That's start. the old-fashioned and gallant. Lady. Right, OK. I think I'm going to win straight away, boys. Do you? you Sorry, think. just give up. <laughs> right, let's go home, then. Give up. Uh, just give up now. I'm going to go straight in with a bit of royal twittery. Yes. This is going to be Mike Tyndall. Mike Tyndall, Mike yes. Tyndall. Okay, so if ever proof were needed that we're all in this COVID mess mm. together, yes. Mike Tyndall has just proved without doubt that we are not. Yes. He, Tell us why. Uh, well, shall I? Go on. Well, yeah. absolutely. Go for it. Right, okay. Well, he has been claimed, he's a multi-millionaire, right? He's worth 15.7 million. He's the fourth richest rugby player in the world. How he's does married. That work? To, I don't Why is he worth 15.7 million? No, but he is, all right? Don't start already. Because he's married me. into the royal family. Exactly. Any case. Cash cow. So he's married to the Queen's granddaughter, lives in a nice house, da 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 da. And he has been claiming furlough. I know. He's Charming, been claiming fellow. His, he runs a public speaking company, right? Yeah. But he, the events company that he runs is only really for one event, and that's him. Yeah. And he's the guy that does the it's, public speaking. It's, it's, only so, claiming, it's only claiming for yeah. one employee, and yes. the only employee is uh, Mike Tyndall. Yes, exactly right. So technically speaking, when he says that he's claiming furlough but he's not getting it, uh, that's a bit confusing, isn't it? It's it is like look, he's not alone. I do realise he's not alone. And it's not, not illegal, alone. right? No, it's not illegal. Morally, it's completely and utterly bankrupt, by yes. the way. But it's not illegal. You know, and you know, Guy Ritchie's done it. Jamie Oliver's done it. Gordon yep. Ramsay's done it. So he's not on his Steve own. Steve Coogan. Steve Coogan's done it. Put his gardener on. Ste- Stella McCartney. She yeah. must be short of a few bob, mustn't she? Absolutely. Um, right. they've, so they've all done it. Um, but honorary exception, Ed Sheeran. Yes. Who has got his staff standing back when the puppy runs, right. and he's paying them out of his and own he's pocket. Paying this is also a guy, by the way, who paid. 28 million pounds in tax last year, so you've got to take your hat off to it. Yeah, you know, absolutely. He's the complete yeah. opposite. Yeah. Stop making yeah. records, and that, then we'll all be happy. Yeah. Then, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, Kevin would have to introduce a note of bitterness to the <laughs> proceedings, but you know, you've got to give the guy credit where it's due. He's not running away yeah, no, agree, to not pay his tax. No, absolutely. 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 And Simon Cowell, to be fair, yeah. which is really hard to be fed, Simon Cowell. Sorry, Simon, if you're listening. No, I think Simon but Cowell's a good guy as well. Absolutely, but he is doing the same thing, and he's had a go at all these very, very rich celebrities who are claiming fellow. Because let's not forget, this isn't the government's money. Everyone's thinking, oh, it's the government's yeah. money, it doesn't matter. It's not. Yeah, it's our money. It's our money. Yes. Taxpayers' money. And there are far more people un- and more deserving than Tyndall who are not getting it. No. Because their company doesn't qualify. Uh, well, exactly. There's about four million people, mm. I think, who have fallen through those mysterious cracks yes. because they're self-employed, running small companies, right. who can't claim mm. anything. And these are people, very small companies, not married to millionaire granddaughters of royalty, et cetera, et cetera. And you know what? The total cost is expected to be 50 billion in furlough I know. that we're paying out. That's extraordinary. 50 billion. Absolutely extraordinary. And there's no guarantee that some of those people who, when they finish getting the furlough money, are not just going to be made redundant because well, if they're working for companies... No guarantee. They are guaranteed to lose their jobs. Yeah. If you've been a whole year and your employers haven't required your services, you can rest assured they're not going to require them yeah. back. Yeah. That when this furlough scheme well, So when you've forgotten ends, how to do whatever it is you're supposed to do. Yeah, when this furlough scheme ends, mm. uh, there will be two million people instantly unemployed. And that's why... Uh, Rishi Sunak keeps kicking the can down the road because he's terrified to lift it. Well, yeah. Yeah, end of April, end of May. End of By the way, I think Rishi Sunak's wife also furloughed some people, didn't she? And well, I think she that, is a yeah. billionaire. I know she, she is. She's one own, of the richest right? women in the world. Oh. But there's obviously a problem with the system, isn't there? But the, um, I mean, you know, it, there is a huge problem with the system. Like, in theory, furlough is a good scheme. If it's well, not anymore, it's not. And I don't think it has been a good scheme for a long time. If it's, it's, support- been, it's, it's put this country but it's, into it's, a state of fantasy. Well, that's that we true. We don't understand that's how true. bad what is but going it's better, on. Is but it's, actually is. But it's, it's better to have people earning money yeah. rather than actually getting benefits. Should have cancelled it? it ages ago. Mm. Yeah, but there, it there, it there are a lot ago. of people depending on it, and Kevin. A lot of people. Well, are, yeah, but then then they'll get used to reality. There's no point in putting them into a false. No, but this is a fool's paradise. Yeah, but it's not their fault they can't work. So therefore, I mean, starving on the street. I know. I mean, this is the bloke who used to work with Matthew well, Wright. If, if, he if we, did, to, if we didn't do this, well, you know, you don't have to believe everything that <laughs> Matthew Wright believes, to, no. to say the least. 
<laughs> or or indeed anything he believes. No, I know. Absolutely. Any he case, doesn't even believe it. Mike Tyndall is my I right think that's royal good. plank. I think that's very good. Kevin, let's have your first one. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a kind of a friend of mine, but he probably won't be after this. <laughs> Uh, it's the editor of the Daily Express, <laughs> Gary Jones. Yeah, we all know Gary Jones. Uh, you know, he's a good bloke, old Gary, but mm. uh, he's had a moment of absolute insanity. Former colleague of ours from the Daily Mirror. Yeah, yeah worked, worked with him at the Daily Mirror, uh, like him a lot and all that, uh, but he has had a moment of journalistic insanity. So uh, I want to preface this <laughs> by saying I'm only criticising him professionally, yes. not as a human Quite being. Quite right. I hope we remain friends after this. Good luck with that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if we don't, what the hell? He might, uh, he might pick on you and run a nasty tabloid campaign against you. Well, that's all right. You. Nobody reads the Daily Express. <laughs> and, and even oh. fewer people are going to read the Daily Express after this. Oh, I like this. the Daily Express. <laughs> Daily I used to work for them. Better. The Daily Star's better. It's, it's yeah. what the Daily, Daily Mail would be like if it didn't have any money. Uh, or journalists. <laughs> uh, so the uh, Daily Express, under Gary's auspices, has, <laughs> has suddenly become green. So green. Uh, this week, it began this week by stunning its handful of remaining readers by telling them, well, this is now a manically yep. green The green revolution. It is devoted to climate change. Yes. Uh, we'll still ch keep churning out the, these newspapers on paper. Yeah. We'll still keep uh, burning resources by being online. But we're going to be terribly, terribly green. Yes. The thing about the media is know your audience. And uh, Gary <laughs> doesn't seem to know his readers. He doesn't seem to know what the, they're about. Well, there is a chance that, that he's change. right and you're wrong, though, isn't well, there? Well, Maybe he's trying to grow it. There, there is no chance that he's right <laughs> and I'm wrong. But there uh, was, I though. Am, look, I've been around in journalism <laughs> longer than he is. I know he's making a massive mistake. Well, all right. And also, also, I don't like this nonsense of ostensibly intelligent journalists buying into this absolute rubbish about us being in a climate emergency. Yes. We are not I'm with in you on a that. climate emergency. I'm with you on that. However, there's a lot of people who think we are, right? And one of the problems that, that, uh, that we find, and, and you'll, see, you'll have seen this if you looked at the paper that day, mm -hmm. is they had a whole series of uh, polling that they did all of which yeah. had 66% of the people saying we want to do something yeah. about the climate emergency. And how does Gary see the newspaper going forward? I mean, when there's new Extinction Rebellion uh, revolts, uh, will it? Will the Daily Express thing go on, block the London bridges? Maybe. You know, what's it going to say at the next election? Vote communist! Greta Thunberg. You know, but Great. I tell Vote you, Gary, Gary, Gary if you're watching, yeah. Gary, uh, within six months you're going to have about six readers, if you're lucky. This is a massive mistake, and it is buying into the biggest lie that we are being subjected to and that is that we are in a climate change emergency. Emergencies don't take 30 years to happen. No, that's true. Very true. Rubbish. But he only means rubbish. it as very genial advice though, of course, Gary, so don't take it too yeah. seriously. And, and, and can, I, can I just say... For I'll that, buy you a drink, Gary. Yeah, you work for the Daily can Star. I just say, can I just say, as a matter of balance, there is one very, very, very good newspaper in that particular newsgraper group. The Daily Mirror, right? Good columnists. Uh, the, really good columnists. They're all in the same company now, aren't they? Okay, yeah, they're all the same company, but the sister paper, the Daily Star, is particularly good. Great fun. Laugh every day. Great columnist on a Wednesday. Also, a great I'm, columnist on a Wednesday. Also, I'm going to say that I quite like the Daily okay. Express because they, above all else, uh, do an awful lot of stories about me, quoting me, listening to my radio show, so I'm all for them, to be honest. So but there won't up. be now after you just had well, a go at the Green Revolution. Maybe that will change. Maybe that will change. Okay, time for my first person uh, this week, and it is Shadow Attorney General. Lord Falconer. Now, I don't know whether you spotted this, yeah. um, but it was a pickup uh, from the Mail on Sunday at the weekend, which then got more legs in the Evening Standard. He basically um, got up in front of a group of lawyers and made a little speech in which he said these words about the coronavirus. Right? This is a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Now, know. you know, we all know what he means, Cheers, right? Charlie. Yeah, thanks a lot, Charlie. <laughs> we all know that my Lord Falconer is a decent guy. I've had him in He's the tent right, of common Charlie, sense. Yeah. I quite like yeah. him, right? He was basically talking about how the law keeps changing and keeps getting more complicated and therefore more interesting because lawyers are a bit weird. They're yeah, a bit and like it's sort good because lawyers can make money out of yeah. it. Yeah, what he means is lawyers can make yeah. much more yeah. money yeah. out of yeah. it. Right. What, yeah. what we're doing is paraphrasing the however many deaths we're actually at. What is it, 43,000? I can't remember. I think it's 120. But it's lawyers, ca lawyers can make money out of it. It's basically what he was saying. Yeah. The thing I always like about Lord Faulkner stories is that they always have this paragraph in them where it says, Lord Faulkner, a friend and former flatmate of former Prime Minister Tony, Tony Blair. Tony Blair, I know. Which never helps him out, really, no. does it? No, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's not going to, is it? That, uh, you know. Yeah, that guy done half hanging on in there, doesn't he? I mean, every, every Labour leader he's managed to secure a big job with. Ed Miliband, of course, unfortunately for, uh, for my Lord Faulkner, was on Andrew Marr on Sunday morning. 
and was asked about it, and he said this. Uh, he said, oh, uh, he's very, very sorry for his choice of words. Mm. It was a very poor choice of words. I've spoken to Charlie this morning, and he is very, very sorry and apologises for what he did. What was it got to do with Ed Miliband? Well, well yeah. I know Ed Miliband has got some kind of nebulous oh. role now in the shadow cabinet. But, I mean, who cares same, what he thinks? Ed, would that be the same Ed Miliband uh, who, during uh, the run-up to the election that he lost against Cameron, uh, uh, was quoted secretly as saying, we're going to weaponise the NHS. That's this right. Is yeah, the, that'll be this the is the one, trouble then. with Labour. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, Keir Starmer saying, oh, well, let's all dress in Union Jack suits and uh, con the patriots mm. in this country. It's always it always comes across as they so don't get it right, cynically do trying to manipulate. Do you remember? Um, do you remember the Ed Stone? which he launched. Oh, the headstone. He, right, he had this stone made up with like the oh, Ten Commandments yeah. for the Labour Party. <gasps> Actually had it made. Yeah, had it made. And it, and I think it cost it, fortunes how much it cost. It disappeared, didn't I it? Think it's, I think I've read that it's somewhere in a warehouse near Hastings. Because that was where he launched it. it, right? It'd be great to find it, Let's it? find the headstone. Headstone, what oh, an absolute yeah, well, That's another really bad move by Labour, isn't it? Let's bring back Ed Miliband, they, 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 a yeah. symbol of utter failure. I mean, next they'll bring Corbyn back, make him Shadow Foreign Secretary. Exactly, why not? Might as well. Right, Dawn, num number two for you. Number two, right. Oh, my God, it's flying, isn't it? Right, I'm going to go. I'm going to go religious now. How are you? Uh, Reverend Gerald Robinson Brown. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. cool. Lovely. He's a 29-year-old trainee vicar at the oldest church in the city of London, All Hallows by the Town. Beautiful, beautiful church. Any case, when we lost um, Captain Sir Tom last yes. week, rest in peace, um, <clears throat> Gerald took it upon himself to tweet about the death of a national treasure. Mm. Everybody loves Captain Tom. Any case, Jarrell, a vicar, tweeted, the cult of Captain Tom is a cult of white British nationalism. I will offer prayers for the repose of his kind and generous soul, but I will not be joining the national clap. Remember, we'll urge to clap on the yes. doorstep, which I, I personally wasn't that great with. I didn't with. join the national case, clap no, either, I but I didn't decide to but tweet out about just ask white a British nationalism. Can I just ask a question? What's wrong with British nationalism? Nothing. Nothing. But you can't be white and have British what, nationalism, but, or else that makes you some what, kind of racist. Right? We are mostly white in this yeah, country. I, know. <laughs> I, I don't actually care what colour we are, but why? Why is race seen in everything now? Mm. At Absolutely everything. There's a race angle to it. Yeah. Mm. Well, and luckily, it's just um, he thought better of it, didn't he? When he, he saw did. that everybody was actually thinking that was the most ridiculous thing they'd ever yep. read on Twitter, mm -hmm. and he withdrew it, and he's now closed his Twitter account. He has, but, yeah. But by the way, uh, some senior clerics have now come in uh, defending him. Have they? And saying yeah, they that have. This yeah. is unfair that he, that he tweeted a perfectly reasonable thing. So once again, this is the Church <laughs> of England under that idiot Welby. I know. Uh, proving that it does not understand the people of this country. Well, this is. It doesn't seem to care about no. the people of this it country. It doesn't. Either. Well, this is why they're down 200,000 worshippers in five years, mm. and mainly because, you know, since Welby's been in charge, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But, I mean, you know, the lovely Jarrell, you know, he's also got a book coming out. Has he? Funny that, isn't it? Yeah. And the book title is Black Gay British Christian Queer. Yeah, it's not on my Christmas list. Well, no, yeah, that's a real page it's, it's, turner, it's, isn't it? It's, it's <laughs> oh, by the way, that, that's that, the ending. Let's, 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 let's shed a little tear but for Justin Welby's uh, uh, passionate campaign to rid Canterbury Cathedral of all of, all of its statues. Yeah, uh, he's yeah, been yeah. defeated. They're going to stay there. Yeah. Well, actually, saw I the cathedral alone, you idiot. I was just I trying to get rid of the cathedral. But also, these are these people, right, who come in, the wokest. They come in and they decide that because they're in charge for a while, they can change absolutely everything. Mm. You know, I always say it's a bit like the, you know, the Archbishop of Canterbury's job is a bit like being the manager of Manchester United. You can't come in and just change everything and say, right, we're going to knock down the stadium, uh, we're going to move Manchester United to, you know, Bedford, and we're going to be a different team in a different place. Yeah. They seem to think that they've got the full charge of the church. Well, they haven't. They're no. just custodians, aren't they? No, it's, it's just, I and mean, it's, it's obviously, you know, how out of touch with yeah, exactly. most people in the Church of England. Yeah, yeah. I know. I mean, it's yes, just... It's, it's, it's like uh, Welby and his gang are right out there in Wokeland, whereas the few remaining people who actually go to yeah. the Church of England churches are nothing like that. No. So, a bit like Gary Jones at the Daily Express, they don't know their own audience. No, no. and no. as you've said many times, you really need to know your audience, and that is an appalling, and it was probably one of the most awful things as well. Can you imagine his family? Captain Tom oh, reading just, that. Uh, just and you just think, you know, what sort of an idiot <coughs> would write that kind of a tweet without thinking well, about it? I don't it? understand the thought process. I don't want to understand the thought process. Um, y y you know, I mean, you know, Captain Tom did amazing things um, and he achieved so much in his life and far more than Gerald. Yeah, I and also, if you don't want to achieve. do something and you don't want to clap for something, just don't do it. Just don't you don't do have it. to tell everybody you're not <laughs> no, doing it. I know. You know what I mean?
No. Kevin, let's have your number two. Well, it's an uh, uh, old friend of the show, uh, Femi Amawule. Mm. Uh, the Hi, ha- Femi! The, the, uh, <laughs> the obsessive Remainer <laughs> who gave up all other forms of income to devote his entire life to appearing on TV and radio shows as a boring pundit. Telling everybody, uh, with one I studied EU law. Yeah, that was yeah, his yeah, big line, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, no. Dawn, Femi, of course, sorry. famously was in the studio with me when we had a little uh, set oh. two. Um, one I of the think greatest we went moments. viral on that one. one of the greatest we? moments Massive in Australia's history. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, like, yeah, uh, uh, and uh, you know the man with the m- world's most dubious American accent. He's yes. from Darlington, isn't he, or something? Yes. Where yeah. did he get that American accent? <laughs> yeah, Darlington. Does he use that Wisconsin. to sound unusual? Do you think at all? <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. I mean, but he, well, he, you do not get an American accent from your parents. No. Well, his parents, I as think, you know, I know exactly right. But I mean, the thing about Femi as well is that he appears to sort of lurch now from one cause to another, none of which are ever very successful. Yeah. And he's now latched onto another one. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I, I, was, I was about to just say, I'm going to nominate him as Plank, for the, Plank of the Week just because he exists. But the real reason, uh, his latest atrocity, is to have joined and in fact become a leading light in this absurd campaign against the not yet even formed GB News. Yes. GB News, GB News is a new kind of Sky News type company, uh, which is going to, uh, it says it's going to produce uh, unbiased news. Mm. Its kind of mission statement was to be perhaps right of centre in order to counteract the BBC yeah. and, the and, Sky. and the increasingly lunatic left Sky News. Uh, and I thought it was a good idea, uh, but it hasn't even hit the airwaves. It's only recruiting now, and uh, Femi and his gang are out there saying defund GB News. Yes. Do not advertise yeah. with this news service. When, Fem- when well, he's Femi- being helped and aided and abetted by Hope Not Hate, yeah, which hope is not that hate. ridiculous organisation. So, 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 GB so, yeah. News hasn't done anything yet. Well, I know that's <laughs> my point. <laughs> so, so Femi, Femi, when assailed quite rightly by lots and lots of objectors and protesters on Twitter and. Facebook, Facebook, who said, hang on a second, you know, you, you're telling telling people don't pay for adverts on this channel, shut this channel down, it hasn't even opened yet. He said, well, it's about freedom of speech. Yes. I've got freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of choice, so I'm free to do this. Oh, but GB News isn't free to yeah. broadcast no. then. No, I, know. I mean, the hypocrisy of it and the insanity of it. And uh, a man, you know, like I've, I, I had a bit of time for Femi in the past because although I didn't agree with him, to say the least, he always had lots and lots of facts. He studied his subject yeah. and, and didn't, you know, he didn't often he didn't often come across as that insane. What he's doing now, <laughs> what he's doing now is absolutely yeah. insane. I guess who's joined his crusade? Mad. Do you know who else has joined his crusade? <laughs> yeah. The fox killer, Jolian Moore. Uh, yeah, he, well, he was in support it's the whole of the fox thing, isn't yeah. it, going on well, there? Well, apparently he actually with that, this is when you know a man has absolutely no sense of irony or self awareness. He actually tweeted out that it was the, it was the cause of Fox News that made. America erupt into yeah. violence over the US yeah, election. Yeah, yeah. And the idea that the guy who killed a fox in his yeah. backyard with a baseball bat yeah. while in wearing his gown. wife's kimono mm. um, would actually put Fox News in any yeah. tweet. Yeah. But I mean, what? you can tell that this guy is these, a moron. These people, they are the enemies of free freedom of speech. Yeah. I mean, even well, we know that. Andrew, ne- Andrew Neil, uh, you know, uh, GB News, and by the way, y- where we are, uh, UK TV News, uh, U- News UK, the company we work for, is going to put up a rival channel. And, you know, I wish all of them great success. Yeah. Yeah. The more journalistic outlets there are, the more exactly. discussion there is, the better yeah. a country also, this is going to be. Don't shut people down. No. Even if GB News said we are going to be a right-wing news yeah. station. By the way, you're not allowed to in this country because of Ofcom. There are regulations. Uh, there are regulations. I mean, but even if it said it. that, right. why not? Why not? Well, it's been a great advert for GB News because like all things, you know, we assume everybody knows about this stuff because we, we work in the media. Yeah. There's a lot more people yeah. now who didn't know it was yeah. happening who now do know it's happening. And, and you know what? Well, and, you know what? It's, it's, it's giving jobs to young journalists. Yeah in the teeth of the worst recession we're ever going to face. And what is wrong with that? And it, well, exactly. it also, it's, it's giving vent to uh, you know a place where there can be more public debate. Yeah. What the hell is wrong? Yeah, but why also, would they want to shut this because down? Because these are the same people who don't think, and I mean, Peter Hitchens and I have discussed this many times, they don't just want you not um, to have the opinion. They don't want you to be able to share the opinion. 
So if you've got that opinion, you shouldn't be allowed to actually espouse it mm. or publicise it so or talk about so it. So liberal freedom of speech only happens if you agree with what yes, they say. Exactly. Yeah, so they'd be all Shocking. for it if it was uh, a left-wing. Oh, of course they would. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, what? The Guardian, bizarrely, was one of the top sort of uh, cheerleaders for this because it was one of their writers, I think it was Marina Hyde, uh, mm. who first wrote about the fact that GB News was going to poison mm. the, the, the well of public debate in this country. Uh, which yeah. is pretty rich coming from the Guardian. Do not, <laughs> you know, it's not, not at all biased. No. no, do not make the mistake of uh, conflating right-wing politics with hate. The real hate in politics yeah. comes from the left. Well, Look I've at Corbyn that. and his mob. Yeah. Look at Momentum. Yeah. Those are the hate merchants, mm. not the right-wingers. Exactly right. Now, speaking of hate merchants, I'm going to nominate a man that uh, I've nominated many times before, and he made it onto Plank of the Year, actually, fairly high up the list. Gary Lineker, a man we <laughs> haven't heard from for a while, um, but he's managed to do it again. He'll no doubt say in his defence... Oh, I was just making a little joke because that's what I do because I'm so whimsical. But you might have noticed the BBC's not on the list this week, but it might be carried over, it might be possible to say, because the TV licence fee, which has been the course of some debate over the last year probably as to whether over 75 should have to pay it, whether they should be threatened <laughs> with prosecution if they don't pay it, whether or not the whole charter is going to have to be changed, whether or not certain people like Gary Lineker have paid too much money. Despite all of that, in a, what can only be described as a moment of absolute and utter madness, the BBC has decided to increase the licence fee Why would you do by that? one pound Why fifty. Why would you do that now, when we are where we are? Yeah, I mean, call me old-fashioned. It might not seem like a lot of money, but why would you do it? One pound fifty. It goes from one hundred fifty-seven fifty to one hundred fifty-nine pounds, and that's going to be from the first of April, twenty twenty-one, mm. right? So they tweet this out, right? So as if that doesn't cause enough outrage to people who have had enough uh, and are sick to death of watching all these woke programs on the BBC that nobody wants. Gary Lineker <laughs> retweets it, quote tweets it, and says this, but. But I've just taken a pay cut. I mean, it was a bit not reading the room, wasn't it? Really it really was because again, I know I see what you're trying to do, a bit like Lord Faulkner trying to give a bit of a, you know sort of humour to the yeah. situation. But this is not the time, Gary. I'm afraid to make out uh, that you're uh, making a joke about prices going up for people who haven't got any money, given that you are a multi-millionaire living in a very comfortable lifestyle mm -hmm. uh, on television whenever you like, and with se several contracts coming out of your ears. I mean, it's just not the right thing to do. Astonishing story this weekend. Sunday Mirror splashed on it, quite rightly for once. Uh, 750,000 pensioners uh, over 75s are just not paying their licence. Really? Yeah. So it's been, uh, you know, after 20 years of over 75s having free yes. TV licence, quite right too, uh, the BBC viciously uh, reimposed this. Mm. Although, to be fair to the BBC, they were told to do it by the government, weren't they? No. So that's what, that's what well, they didn't it, have is to their defence. They no, didn't they got, have to. No, they weren't told. No. They said there was no way out, mm. that they'd have mm. to do it. Yeah. They, were not they weren't all, they didn't have to do I'm it. I'm just trying to show a bit of no, uncharacteristic fairness. No, 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 we're fairness. not going to be fair to the BBC, because the BBC's been I outrageous. I apologise un unreservedly. So, so seven... <laughs> 750,000, they, they think maybe as many as a million yeah. over 75s uh, have refused to pay their licence. So that's and 159 they're, they're million saying, quid they're out. They're all saying, uh, come and get me. Yeah. Per, find me, send me to prison, see yeah. how that looks. Right. Bit, uh, and that's put a £120 million hole in the BBC's finances. Mm. More and more people are not paying their licence. I'm getting that sense and, all the time. And they, yeah. Instead of putting the licence fee up, they should be thinking about seriously reducing it because the more they dig their he mm. heels in about this anachronistic TV licence, the less it is going to last. Yes, I agree with well, that. Well, you know that they pay their executives 375 million pounds Each. a year <laughs> a year no the average the average bbc <laughs> executive is on 148000 pounds a year the average earnings of BBC employees is £45,000 a year. Meanwhile, across the rest of the UK, it's twenty four grand. I was going to say, that's really roughly twice, isn't it? Yeah. But really I mean, what about, I mean I, I've mean, i mentioned this guy before, Ken Macquarie. £325,000 yeah. for, for being yeah. in charge yeah. of diversity yeah. and, uh, what is it, uh, bias yeah. Yeah. on the news. And, t and uh, Tim Davey, the new uh, Director General, we've got to stop calling him the new Director General there. He's been he's there been quite doing a long a while, time. Though, he's, he's made a mess of it already, so give him, give him uh, a credit where it's due. Uh, he he uh, said last week, uh, oh, well, you know, Netflix might be doing all right, but, you know, it costs you 150 quid a year for Netflix. And if we were on the open market, the BBC would be, we'd have to charge at least £420. Okay, do it then. Yeah. Try it. See how many Try people it. actually yeah, exactly. buy it. People are not 
pay, right? the people do not want to pay 157 pound 50 let alone 159 mm. and they would never pay uh, 400 quid plus in a month of mm. sunday but i don't believe that the bbc does give particularly good value for money no. what is it that's so great about it what is it that is so much better than netflix or itv well or the thing Channel is 4? i mean people are used to using the bbc in their own particular way for example pump some people like radio one some people like radio two some people like radio three um, and, and you sometimes go on to these different radio stations and listen to them for five minutes. Mm -hmm. But you don't listen for very long. No, no. And if they weren't there, I wouldn't really miss them. No, no. And we're talking our generation. We're mm. talking the older generations. We're not talking youngsters because they're not watching no, the BBC. They're all watching YouTube. Unfortunately, exactly. for, for and that's so, free, yeah. by the way. Yeah. So uh, as far as the BBC is concerned, they are barking uh, up the wrong tree. We're on YouTube. And Gary Lineker, I think, really ought to be ashamed of himself. And if he had any kind of brains and or kind of feelings of remorse, he would take it down. But well, that's I, you know, I had a guy on from the, the representing from the, uh, what they call the Sil Silver uh, Trust or something, the, yeah. the, the campaigners for the over 75. Guy came on my show at the weekend and he says, well, he said, apart from anything else, he said, to, you know, why, why are, are we being punished? Why are we being told to pay our licence fees after 20 years when they're paying Gary Lineker 1.75 million mm. to say play the diagonal bull yes. on match of the day? It's I ridiculous. I know. It really is. And it's not as if he works his socks off, is it? He's not even on it for most of the year. Yeah, um, exactly. Dawn, what's your number three? Right, my number three. These are all a bit linked today, aren't they? Right, this is the United Nations, uh, and this is UN Women, which is a group designed to empower and fight for equality for women. So you would have thought... You thought they'd be in favour of women, then. That, yeah, absolutely, yes. men to quite like women. Yeah, um, women. In, in any case, women. Uh, yeah, women. any case, you know, you would have thought they'd be, you know, fighting for, you know, young women around the world being raped, enslaved, beaten, abused, yes. murdered, treated as second-class citizens, etc., right? etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, et cetera. In any case, they tweeted this week that eight times in one tweet, eight lines, said, there is no wrong way to be a woman. Now, we right. all know, us women... What that means, what that implies is being a woman is all inclusive. Yeah. In other so words, anyone can be a woman. Anyone can be a woman. And I made the big mistake of tweeting back, well, well as yeah. a woman. As a woman, there's no wrong way to be a woman, but I'm suggesting having a penis and testicles sort of isn't probably the right way to go about it. Mm. Oh my lord. Was that the beginning oh my of God. hell being brought down? Like, like the touch paper and yeah. stand back. I mean, that was that really, really kicked off. And um, I've been threatened with a bit of light rape. Goodness gracious. By another woman. Really? Yeah, but it's a woman with a with obviously a penis. Yes. So yeah, that was that wasn't it for experience. I know. Um, so it has gone mad. But it's it is like Look, I get, you know, I get that. But it's more wokery, isn't it? For it's the more wokery. And why tweet, aren't they out there page? fighting for women who are really, really mm. suffering? Why has it turned into a political woke campaign to fight for something that most ordinary women, really, we just want to get on with our lives? And be left alone. And be left alone. Yeah. And so, obviously, there is a wrong way to be a woman. And I proved that by, well, by actually being a woman. daring to answer back and point mm. out that you know possibly so people get so angry about this stuff i, don't I know oh my god they're it. so angry they're so angry and all i want i look i i you know you go to the gym sometimes you to, it's hard to be a woman though, yeah isn't it? apparently well, it is, so. you've got a penis. it's a good song <laughs> um but so all i want is to go into my changing room in the gym and and not can be not be confronted by a naked woman right with with you know with the, the, the boy bits yes that's no. all I want. I mean, so, it's, it's, it's different if you're in Germany, obviously, because that's, they kind of just have mixed changing rooms there and you just have to, what you see is what you get. Yeah, but if I'm going into a mixed changing room, you, I expect to see know. that. But yeah. I'm not. I'm not. No, of and, course. But it's turned into this... this, this, this It's a very toxic it's, argument, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's turned into trans trumps. Mm. It's like, you know, a trans person's rights trump a biological woman's yeah. rights. And I'm not even sure if that's the correct phraseology. Mm. But I would just like to say to the Cis UN women... Woman. Yeah, what? I mean, I've never known away. about what that is. Cis really. woman is a woman. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, go away. I mean, so UN women, Cis like, man as well. Cis fight male. for equality <laughs> properly. You know, like, I'm suffering here with these two talking over me, being boys, yes. you know, mansplaining everything. So, cis fight. <laughs> so, fight for women and look after the young girls that are really suffering around the world. Yes, I think that's a very good sentiment and very well said. Thank um, you. It's my turn, I think, isn't it? So, no, it's your turn, Kevin. Sorry, your third one. Uh, right, in the spirit of, uh, you've uh, come up with a few people who aren't particularly famous, but uh, have been particularly plankish. Yes. Uh, so, in that spirit, uh, I've come up with someone called uh, Siobhan Benita. Oh, yes. Uh, she's some sort of former 
a uh, high up, high ranking civil servant who mm. now works uh, in the field of political campaigning. Oh yeah. Uh, and she got about like 18,000 followers, so she's not the total. Oh, so she's sort of middling. Yeah, Twitter. she's a middling uh, pundit type person. Mm. Uh, she uh, tweeted a big picture of her, uh, uh, she called it a black passport, actually it's dark it's blue. It's dark blue. Mm. Uh, she Maybe says, she's colour blind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my new black passport has just arrived. I will hate this document until the day it expires. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> Brexit shambles. <laughs> Dear me, I talk mean, about people being angry. It's a passport, yeah. love. It's yeah. a passport. <laughs> also, don't worry, also, don't worry you can't go you anywhere can't for a while, it. so yeah. you, don't have to, <laughs> and, you don't have to look at it for ages. And here's the thing, Siobhan, when it uh, expires, you'll have to apply for another one. And guess what? It'll be the same colour. Yeah, it also won't so be So you're going to hate that till it expires. You're going to be a lot of hating in your passport world for yeah. the rest why, of your life. Why are people getting so worked up about this? I know. It's done, it's dusted, move on, get over it. Let's make a success of it as yeah. much as it's we can. It's my favourite reason for Brexit, to get the old blue passport To get the old blue passport back. Passport just back. to annoy people. But they're people. not actually like the old blue ones, are they? They haven't got the two kind of, um, you remember they used to have like two little sort of slits in them where you'd have the number and something yes, else. yeah, yeah. No, they're not. Well, no, they're because no. they're, they're, they're the bendy covers because in the old days they were, you know. They were really solid. Proper, proper cardboard. Yeah, they were huge as well. They're yeah. like the biggest window. passports yeah. Massive, in the world. Massive, yeah, absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. So presumably it's now the same size as the European yeah. one, but it's just yeah. a different colour. I honestly don't give a monkey's what colour my passport is. I just want to be able to use it again. Well, exactly. You just want to be able to go somewhere know, with it. Anyway. Also, I'm one of the things I'm hoping we can now do again, because I actually missed this when we were in the EU, um, when you go to places like Italy or France or Spain or Germany, you get a stamp. I want a Ooh, stamp. Oh, yeah. You know, when that. I was a kid, we yeah. used to drive across Europe. Yeah. We used to get a stamp in, yeah. Italy, in France, get one in Luxembourg, get yeah. one in Switzerland, mm -hmm. Austria, Germany, mm -hmm. Italy. You might have to do it again now, mate. Well, I think it's great. That is great. Um, you can claim them. Yeah. Yeah. And also, also, the other thing about uh, passport pass, uh, stamps, yeah, you're right, as kids, you know, yeah. oh, please can yeah, I have yeah, one? Can yeah, have one, and, yeah. and all the nice immigration officers, yeah, all right, Sonny, you know, give Yeah, it was one. great. Uh, but uh, they, they're going to come back into their uh, own, aren't they, because of the, the crisis, you mm. know, people are going to want to know where you've been. That's so true. Maybe actually. it's passport stamps yeah. are going to make a big comeback. Well, poor old Siobhan, I really do feel for her, because amongst all of the terrible things that are going on in the world at the moment, imagine the having to have a passport in a colour you didn't like. I know. <laughs> Also, 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 oh. I will hate this document until the day it expires. <laughs> Siobhan, get a life. What happens Blow also, up. what happens if she expires before the passport? Yeah. I mean, I don't wish to put anything uh, no, you know, nasty No, that's probably there. going a bit far. It, like, is that going possibly, too far? Yeah, sorry. Far, I'll take yeah. it back, Siobhan. Yeah, but, it's, but there's an implication in her angry little tweet that uh, we won't always have to have these passports because we will, of course, rejoin, we'll rejoin at yes. some point. Good Siobhan, luck with that one. No. You're never no, rejoining. No, You've had it. No, it's definitely not. You happening. lost. And Maybe you're she out. could. You know what I would suggest she could do, uh, and this you'll like this suggestion, right? Get one of those passport holders, which is a different <sighs> colour. Right? Who'd have thought of okay? that? Okay, now you no. can get a nice expensive one. You go down to Harvey Nicks, get a nice expensive. Uh -huh. Gucci one maybe, uh, <laughs> or maybe I don't know um, an Adidas one. I don't know, but you can cover it up, can't you? And you can, and you'll yeah. never know what colour. No, 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 it is. no, no, absolutely, yeah. See, I'm uh, full of good uh, ideas today. That's amazing. Isn't that God, good? It's a positive thing. Like Very that. positive. Okay. I like that. Yeah. yeah so I'll pass that on. To, maybe I'll tweet Siobhan later. Yeah. Um, my, uh, <laughs> we were talking about the leader of the Labour Party earlier, and I'm afraid he's back in it. So <laughs> Keir Starmer. Yeah. Uh, just when here. you thought you couldn't actually make it this week, but I'm going all the way back to the day after we made planks last week because it was Prime Minister's questions of course <laughs> when he made this appearance and he's getting more and more grumpy right and I love the idea that more and more people are now saying do you know what Keir Starmer I'm not sure he's all that really I don't think he's that Liar clever. Starmer. I don't, Liar yeah, Starmer. yeah and I mean suddenly uh, he was got at very easily by Boris Johnson who skewered him not once but twice mm -hmm. on the on the outside of this uh, debate they were having about hotel quarantine which is another story we might get to next week um, but Keir Starmer denied saying something that he'd actually not only said, but had said several times. Four times. And it four was yeah, also recorded yeah. in Hansard, which as yeah. everybody knows is the great record mm -hmm. you can see it on of YouTube things that are well. said, right? Yeah. But worse than that was him not remembering what he had said, particularly since he's known as Captain Hindsight. He, was, he couldn't remember what he'd actually yeah, said a few yeah. weeks earlier. He denied it officially. Then, after the PMQs is over, he gets involved in a sort of skirmish behind the Speaker's chair where apparently he had to be kind of physically restrained yeah. and pulled well, away from Boris Johnson because Boris Johnson had wowed him up so much. Let's not forget what he denied saying. Let's not forget what he denied saying. He denied standing at the dispatch box in the House of Commons four times yeah. and saying that Britain uh, must have 
abandon its unilateral vaccine policy and join the EU vaccine yes. rollout we programme. Be with so uh, if any of you think that we would have been better under a Labour government throughout this crisis, there's your reason mm. we would not have been. Yeah. We'd have been tied up to mm -hmm. Ursula van der Leyen yeah. uh, <laughs> and uh, in a complete mess. So, you, you know, so he denied this in the House of Commons. And to his credit, he had to, he had to. Uh, apologise right. afterwards because there. Yeah, but is, he didn't really apologise, did he? His, an apologize, his was apology it? was, was oh, oh, I, I didn't hear it right. I mean, how can you yeah, mishear? Yeah, I mean, did. we've all been in the House of yeah, Commons. It's yeah. a very small chamber. Yeah. If you stand where Keir Starmer stands and you sit where Boris Johnson sits, mm -hmm. you're not going to mishear yeah. no, that distance no, no, away, I'm afraid. No, no. Uh, you know, and all this feeds into why all the Labour acolytes, they've had enough. Yeah. They think Keir Starmer's rubbish. Well, they think not only is he rubbish, but also... I and he is. This, I said this, I've been saying it since the beginning. I've never thought he was any good. I never thought he was particularly clever as a lawyer. I never thought he was particularly good as the Brexit secretary since he had two different policies one for where you voted to leave and one for where you voted to well, remain. Quiet, and, and he also then, uh, of course, took over from Jeremy Corbyn. But he hasn't done anything no, at no, all. Come on, come on, that's not fair, Mike. He loves the flag. Oh, now he does. He does love now the flag. Now he loves the flag. So, so much that he can't move without at least two yes, flags. He's got to have one behind being him. behind him. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, the red unbelievable. Flag. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, but also, his idea of kind of, you know, asking questions to Boris Johnson that he's already answered, but he hasn't actually bothered to notice that he's answered. It's ridiculous. See, his entire policy in terms of being the opposition, and I, you know, at first, you know, you couldn't deny it wasn't that bad an idea. And it is this, when your enemy is making mistakes, do not interrupt him. Mm. Uh, so uh, the government was in a lot of trouble about the coronavirus and all that. Uh, and uh, so he just sort of sat back and let them go, get on with it quite sensibly, I think. But uh, through the months, uh, the, the government's coming to its own. Its vaccine rollout mm. is a triumph. Uh, it's looking better politically. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm very annoyed about not coming out of lockdown. But, you know, the, Boris is in, we pretty, will he's in pretty good uh, mm. states. Uh, and uh, it's astonishing. It's astonishing, given the circumstances of this country, that the Labour Party and Keir Starmer are below Boris Johnson and the Tory party mm. in the popularity. Mm. It really is. That's no mean feat. No, it's quite an achievement. Well, I think actually. people are seeing through them as well. And, and the other bit of news this week was our, um, about their um, Labour and the um, introducing a civil award, getting rid of the gong system. Oh, yeah. So there was no, no sirs, so uh -huh. Keir Starmer will have to cancel himself. He'll have to give himself. his away then, will he? Yeah. He's got um, his. He's not right. interested he's got, anymore. He's, he's all right. He's all right. You know, <laughs> Abolishing the Victoria Cross for, uh, for you know people. Well, because it's a bit too close to the slavery yeah, absolutely. age. Absolutely, and uh, MPs no longer have to swear an oath of allegiance to the Queen. But hey, we've got a flag. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, this is when it came out that oh. he once wanted to uh, abolish the monarchy, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Well, well I'll, tell you, I'll tell you one thing though. Uh, Why don't we just abolish the Labour Party? No, no, well, no. I stopped See, taking I, I them think... seriously when they start shouting at tea bags. Yeah. Yeah. The, here's what they should do with the honours system uh, keep it going, but ban politicians like Keir Starmer and Boris Johnson from being able to nominate anyone. Yes. Why did keep the politicians out of it yeah. and it'll be yeah, a well, perfectly he, good system. If he hates it that much, why did he bloody accept it? Right. Well, because he's a hypocrite. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's in the Labour Party. Oh, yeah. Come on. Oh, sorry. Come on. Smart that. Because he's got sugar. Now, uh, we've got our nine, I think. Um, Have we? I think that I'm going to choose my favourite one of yours, Dawn. So okay. give me your three, please. My, mine were the Reverend Joa Robinson Brown. Yes. Um, they were the UN Women's Group. Yes. And um, Royal Husband, Mike Ooh. Tyndall. Oh, I think it's got to be Mike Tyndall, oh, isn't it? Mike Tyndall. Shoo absolute shoo-in. Mike yes, Tyndall. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Right. Kevin, uh, suggest yours to Dawn. Mine were... Uh, Green Daily, Gormless Green Daily Express editor <laughs> Gary Jones. <laughs> He's not going to pick him. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to choose that, are you? I because might. because you, you want to suck up to the Express <laughs> well, Group newspaper. Hello. Because you write a column well, in the sister paper. Rival, rival paper. It's a rival paper. It's a very good paper. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what's a great column. Is uh, Robbie Savage's Mine? mum in the mirror? Oh, really? Every Saturday. Absolute must. Oh, I haven't read that. Absolute must not read. No. Uh, so. <laughs> So we've got, why, why is that in there? Why God is that knows. in the paper? Right, so, yes, Gary Jones. And then uh, Femi Amawula uh, for oh, his uh, opposition to GB News and uh, say, telling advertisers not to advertise with it when it hasn't even breathed a breath on telly mm. yet. Uh, outrageous. An affront to freedom of speech and expression. Uh, and finally, uh, Siobhan Benito. Oh, yes. The uh, hater of her back or her 
blue passport, a document that she's just received that she will hate until it expires, when she'll have to apply for another one and hate that till it <laughs> expires as well. So those are my three. Go on then. I'm going to go for passport bird. Passport Sorry. woman. Yeah, passport woman, absolutely. Right. Can I call her a bird? No. Yeah, no. No, that you can. Sorry. Any case, yeah, I'm yeah, go yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, that is just so... I get your hate mail on uh, Twitter well, again. A lot of people stupid. disappointed you didn't pick Femi, though, I have to say. But that's No, right. I know there will be, but I, I you know... All right. I, I, I sort of like Femi's got... Well, you're in charge, Mike. You've got a soft spot You're in charge, Femi, Mike. You Put Femi me back in. That'd be know, my Femi was the reason we black. went viral. That's I mean, true. I had a particular eye roll, and it was it's on there forever yeah, now. It's over good. Femi. I still watch it every now and then. I know. Just to keep. Yeah, that's just, just weird. It's really yeah, it is really yeah, good. It's just weird. Um, right, my three: uh, Gary Lineker, Lord Faulkner, and Sir Keir Starmer. Uh, oh, uh, it's tough, uh, but uh, I think because uh, the BBC is getting it is so wrong. And uh, Gary Lineker is symptomatic. Is 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 part and parcel of why the BBC is getting everything wrong. Mm. I'm going to go for Gaza. I think Gary Lineker. He's always a good one for the top three. It has to be yeah. said because he's the guy everybody loves to hate, even though he thinks a lot of people like him. So the three: <laughs> uh, Gary Lineker, Mike Tyndall, Passport Woman. That's quite a tough choice, actually. I mean, I would say Passport Woman drops out into yeah, third not, place. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree but with that. But you may that differ. That made me laugh. It was like Butter Woman the other week. Yes. I mean, you but know. But Butter Woman didn't win, though, did no, she? No, no, no. But, I mean, it, it's, it's quite fun to yes. get your knickers in a twist about it something yeah, like We want to know why you didn't have the guts to nominate Gary Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Daily Star, Daily Star, follow me. <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> Gary Jones is right about... good column. You might write about you if you're not careful. Yeah. Um, now... Well, all right. Well, so do you think we should keep Passport Woman in the mix? No, then? that's John's choice. Seriously, I'm just being funny. No, it's not. No, um, oh, no, it's our choice as to what we oh. do. Oh well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. A Are you with me? Look, Gary. It's like I say, Gary's an old friend of mine. Uh, it's just a purely professional criticism I have of him. I thought uh, you meant so Gary. So I would, I would go personally. I think Femi should be right up there. Well, you know, I don't mean that. We've picked the three though. Uh? We've picked the three already. We're not going back on that. Well, you why not? Yourself. No, because you don't. We've already picked the three. The three are passport woman, Mike rules. Tyndall, and Gary Lineker. Well, it's going to have to be Tyndall for me. Tyndall to win. Yes. Tyndall to win. Yes. Bank of the week. That yes. suits me actually. So I it's would not put a competition, Dawn. I we always pick, give you the easy one. No, but she well. loves it. Gary Lineker second and Passport Woman, I think, third. Alright. Or are you gonna argue that as well? No. I'm not arguing. He was a Kick lot arguing. Passport woman out. Give it to Femi. <laughs> I've won. Femi fourth. I've won. Femi <laughs> can be fourth. Fourth. <laughs> we'll put Femi fourth. So there we are. Uh, it's a great story today in the sun. Uh, we have decided to pick Mike Tyndall as Plank of the Week. Congratulations. I'm sure you'll enjoy swimming around in your private swimming pool at Gatcombe Park while remembering that this great award is yours and yours alone. We'll see you next week. Thank you, guys. This is Plank of the Week. Thank you. <laughs>